What's happening everybody and welcome back to the True Gamer Podcast, the podcast hosted by two gamers for you, the True Gamers. I'm one of your hosts, Eddie, along with my bro, the inverted gamer himself, Sheps, bro. How are you doing today? Good. Yeah. Good. Good. I have found a game I'm interested in. Haven't played yet, Ooh. but I'm interested in. I like it. You're thinking about gaming. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm considering <laughs> some gaming. I'm considering some gaming. That's that's nice to hear. But before that, how are you? How are I, things? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I, I will say I didn't sleep very well last night, so I'm joining oh, you no. on this boat. We were both two sleepless lads. Oh, no. <laughs> you you got a whole bad night of sleep? <clears throat> it was quite terrible. I'm not, it was I mean, quite for, terrible. We, I do have some sympathy for you because you sleep well. Mm. It it's noticeable. For it's you. the allure of like oh, you do usually sleep good. Right. So this is the thing that you didn't get today. Yeah, it's like man flu in it. Like we're, it's just worse for us because we're used to being up. Here. Exactly. We're used to being up here. Right. Peak. Exactly. <laughs> and then it's the end of the world because we're brought down to equality with women. Now. With women. No, who wants that? Terrible sort of Wrong podcast. <laughs> Other than that, though, I'm pretty good. Uh, life is going pretty well. Uh, work is going yeah, all right, all right, it's super steady. But one bad news. Okay. My gaming has suffered this week. <clears throat> you know, I was playing The Witcher like every yeah, day yeah, constantly yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, nice up to date recent game. Yeah. Immediately it dropped off. I was like, I, something just, something happened and I got distracted and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I just never managed to get back into it. I keep thinking about it every night. Do you know what it is? I know what it is. It's the Euro football. Right. The Euro football has been sports. going on for the last uh, two weeks. <clears throat> not a huge football fan. Not a huge football fan. Yeah. I, I, I I like watching football occasionally, but only these big competitions really excite yeah. me. Yeah, agreed. Because <clears throat> there's like, in a matter of a month, we're going to figure out who's the best in the world or whatever it is. Yeah. And it is actually the world, not like America. Yeah. Or it's, actually, it's Euro this time, so. That's where all the talent is, so it is the best in the world, exactly. to be fair. Exactly. Oh, what? Well, no, a little bit of Brazil and yeah, like Paraguay just, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that over there. But who cares close about enough. this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I really like these competitions and I've been hard on it. And they're usually at like, in the beginning, it's like three matches a day. So yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. two, four, and like two, five o'clock and t eight o'clock. So all my time in the day is gone. Yeah. And even now it's like a five o'clock and eight o'clock. So yeah, all the yeah. night is gone. <clears throat> and I'm an old man. So obviously it's my true. bedtime is like 8.30. Exactly. <laughs> so this is what happens. Once that's over though. Back on the gaming. Gaming will commence. Gaming will commence. Well, I'm glad to hear that because the game I'm interested in just sort of released. And it's, this isn't like a niche, like, oh, look at Sheps and his cool, like he's picked a diamond out of the rough. Like, <laughs> it's it, people are playing it a lot, you know, and um, like it's relatively big on Twitch and stuff at the minute. Sheps, but, the hipster game, obviously, has to right. be a game that no one else has is to be playing. be niche, you know, <laughs> micro brewery game. Um, when everyone starts playing it, it's actually not that good anymore. But the reason I'm interested in it, I, thought, I think you might be as well. <clears> so it's called... It's like the first descendant or the last descendant. It's something like that. First. So there's a couple of really interesting things about it. One is it's free to play. Oh. And I'm sure there's like some pay to progress and skins and stuff in that I know for a fact there is. Okay. Um, but it's basically, as far as I can tell, because I've watched a good few hours of people playing playing it, it's basically Destiny having a baby with like The Division, which are two games we both really enjoyed. Oh, okay. And free to play. And another thing is uh, it's 35 gigs. That's it. It's nothing. Nothing. It's nothing. nothing. So it's not oh, going to... Oh, shit. That was... No, I just um, looked at the, one of the first videos up on YouTube <coughs> of gameplay, and it's the the main, the character, and there's like this, like, I guess like the back end of a ship or like a yeah, wall or yeah. something there. And immediately it reminded me of like, you know, the wall in Anthem? Yes. And I was yeah. like, oh, this is Anthem again. A lot, of people in, a lot of people in the like Twitch chats and stuff have been like, did you ever play Anthem? Because <coughs> it's giving me Anthem vibes, but it works. <laughs> All right. So, and it, look, it looks like it's going to be a pretty interesting game. So interesting. like I said, yeah, free to play, free to play, not going to take up your whole hard drive. No blockers in that sense. It looks like, you know, that it looks like the microtransactions are things like, you know, faster XP and and skins, right? So, huh. so whatever. I'm fine with that. <clears throat> oh, I see the 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 Destiny vibe to it. Here. Yeah, and it seems like some of the characters that you're playing have di different kinds of abilities, a la, you know, your what are they called um, the hero the, shoes. Yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. That. So not too much, like one or two, sort of like an ultimate ability sort of thing. So it, it looks really interesting to me. I'm keen to to try it. So I've got it downloaded, but I haven't actually like 
fired it up yet. I like it. I like the look of it. Um, <clears throat> and I, do you know what the the HUD as well kind of gives me, like you said, the division yeah, vibes. Yeah. Division uh, meets uh, Destiny. It looks. It, it, it does looks the, really the, very apt description. I it like looks it. really interesting to me, and I've seen like some of the cutscenes look interesting. It look it just released like. I've noticed things like even in the ad that they put out, like there's a chick who like walks into the ocean yeah. and like there's no water physics around her or anything like that. But I, I don't care. It's free to play, right? It's free to play. Yeah. Otherwise, it looks really good. Um, I will say it's made by a Korean uh, company and they are all about the fan service. There are female models in there, like running around in mini skirts and stuff. It's, I mean, it's kind You've of You've already sold me. You don't need yeah. to keep digging. You know, um, <laughs> You know Stella Blade? Yes. It, a lot of the characters look look like that. Okay, I feel you on yeah, that. Yeah, I feel yeah. you on that. But okay. to be honest, it looks really interesting. I'm really keen to try it out because I've wanted to play something like The Division for ages, but it just just wasn't there. I'm going to check this out with you. if we got, Especially if we're like, it's online and we can play it together and yeah, we can 100%. sort of discover it together. Yeah. At least so we can jump in because... I, I, I will say just the one thing that I really like. I'm, I, f I find that I'm more into this, I guess, the more older I get. Yeah. Third person shooter over, over first person shooter nowadays is yeah. much more appealing to me. Like the one thing about Destiny is that like, Destiny is great and mm. I love it and everything like that. But as time went on, I was like, man, I wish I could like be further out. And then eventually you could Definitely do Definitely like, a game like Destiny, yeah. I feel like benefits more from being able to see the kit that you're wearing, see the abilities. I, I, I definitely agree with you on It's that. a double-edged sword yeah. actually because the guns are so fucking cool yeah, looking. Yeah. And when you're right up there and you've got this thing that's emanating light right, and right. shit like that, it's like, oh, it's so cool. But obviously then you've got the armors that look so fucking cool. And it's like, you exactly, like to see that exactly. too. So yeah. And I think, um, uh, I don't, I don't, get that sense like that, that's not my i don't care first person or third person totally like, the, if i jump on for a few rounds of something it's apex so mm. i'm that's fps right first person so i'm down for either but i i just thought this looked like a really good match it's we both loved playing the division we both loved playing destiny this is both of them and it's free. I don't have to buy fifteen hundred DLCs to catch up to in Destiny. And I'm mm. not. Do you know what I mean? We start from That's so a big. I'm, I'm really interested in it. It looks really interesting. Yeah, I can see why you're interested in it. This chick is wearing the most egregious thong. Oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And also, I watched uh, th there was like a raid type thing. Like it, these two dudes were just fighting this boss. Yeah. And this boss is like a ninety foot robo queen. <laughs> and she, she just she's like I don't know. It looked great. <laughs> She's it like, looks her, like her breasts are barely being contained by the bikini yeah. she's And wearing. ironically, that is the place that does most damage. So you're, you're, <laughs> you must aim for the nipples. <laughs> you know, as standard gaming law. As it always is. You this know, is why, this is the why like, every, everybody knows that female characters and female heroes are much more powerful than men. This is why they're able to wear less armor. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. where do they protect the breasticles. There you go. It's the that you're gonna get a crit if you shoot there. You know. <laughs> Do you know what's really funny is like because we have this constant, um, this constant discussion in gaming about like oh our games like uh, sexualizing yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, women and stuff like right, that, right. and we, men are only interested in ones that are sexualizing, yeah. and and that's why women can never be taken seriously, and women ha men hate games that have women that are serious. Right. And we make all of these counterpoints, these completely valid counterpoints, like all of these great uh, female characters yeah, yeah. that we all love, yeah. the Ellies and stuff like yeah. that of gaming. Fantastic. And then this comes out and we're like, look, it's good, but it just happens to look that way. Look we how bootylicious these models are. We can't, it's not, that's not the reason why it's good, but it's just, it's a, it's, it's, it's just not a my fault the creative vision of these geniuses <laughs> happens to look this way. <laughs> Listen, really, it's, it's supposed to, it's, it should look like look, that, it really. it builds the law, okay? The world <laughs> only makes sense <laughs> if the armor looks this way. You wouldn't understand. You're just a, you're just a, <laughs> you wouldn't get it. Nor me. <laughs> oh, so I'm looking man. into, uh, was it the first Descendant or the last Descendant? Uh, the first the Descendant. descendant yeah. So I'm looking into that. I got it downloaded. So as soon as we got some out. time. I'm going to check it out. As, mate, like I said, one, it sounds so stupid, but one of the reasons that I'm so interested in it is that it's only 35 gigs. And there looks to be like, I'm sure there's going to be expansion and stuff in, coming. But it looks like there's plenty of content right now. Mm. And I just like the idea of a game not taking up your entire PS5's hard drive. Yeah. I've got it on my PC, but still, like, I just, 
a game like Call of Duty is like 150, 200 gigs. Yeah. And yeah, it's good and all that stuff and it serves the audience, but it just doesn't feel like it needs to be that big. Yeah. It feels, it feels, um, it feels like you're being taken for a, a, lo- a laugh. If someone, if someone told me, oh, the whole reason why Call of Duty's thing is like that is because it aids like the ease of purchasing of yeah. like DLC or something like that. Like it's instant in because the DLC yeah. is already on your hard drive because they pre-downloaded it for you. I'd be like, of course it is. Of course it is. Yeah. When really it should be like, if I want it, then it will be there. Yeah, if I don't I'll, want it. Right. Don't fuck me over, bro. Yeah, exactly. So I, part of it is like, I'm attracted by the fact that it's small, you know, like mm. it, it's not going to take up my whole hard drive. And if I don't, if let's say we play it for the next like month and then we're like, do you know what? We've played it. There's not enough content yet. We'll wait for the next update. I'm not going to delete it. But if I did that with COD, and obviously it's one of those games you play on repeat, but if I did that with COD, I would delete it to get something else on the on the console, or on the computer. Mm. Like, it's just, I know it sounds dumb, but it, it feels like they're respecting the player's hard drive space a bit more, which yeah, I like. Yeah. Also, it's very attractive to look at. Because of the Come scenery, on, yeah. the scenery and the guns. <laughs> and, but so, yeah, it looks like a solid looter shooter. I'm interested in it. So that's what I'm going to be trying at some point, I reckon. I'm uh, I'm downloading it now to my PlayStation. Yeah, buddy. I don't know if it's cross-play. Oh. I assume it would be. Let me have a quick... It's on, it's on everything. It's on like PS4, PS5, uh, Xbox You think One. it would be, but... Xbox Series X, yeah. first uh, cross play uh, multiplayer. Explain, Jesus Christ! If, they, if it needs an explanation, this is a bad idea. Uh, if you're looking to play a free to play Lua Shoe RPG online with friends, you'll need to know the uh, cross play platform. I mean, here's the thing: the most important thing is it's 35 gigs. If it isn't cross play, you just stick it on this thing. Yeah, it will take you yeah. an hour at most to download, not even, and you'll we'll jump on. Okay. <laughs> so, it, have you ever done one of these things where, like, you search? Is the thing released yet? Or yeah, where yeah, is it yeah, going yeah. to be released? Or where can I watch it? Or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And you have a bunch of these things like, people want to know if you could do it, be released. The exact same thing that yeah, you type, yeah. but people want to know. And then you go into it and there's about four paragraphs of them explaining why somebody might would want to know this very basic question, yeah. that complete waffle. Right. And then it goes on. It's like, yes. And, yeah, you can. <laughs> Bro, <Just> so fuck. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> Related to this, but not specifically gaming, my chicks got really into making soups and they're actually really good. Okay. All right. Really good. And, you know, for me, we were talking earlier, I'm trying to clean up my diet a bit. So it's a good way to get loads of veg and I just chuck some chicken in there. So I've got something to eat with my juice. Right. She goes and finds recipes and she starts immediately complaining. I'm like, what's wrong? Typical thing. I'm like, my chick's just complaining. She was like, find me the recipe in this. And I'm like, okay, I can read faster. Maybe it's like whatever. Five paragraphs of like, uh, like chicken soup. When I was a, like a little girl, my grandma moved from Paraguay to, <laughs> oh my God, I don't <laughs> just like cook the chicken, stick some stock in there, add some stuff. Like, what are you doing? This is insane. It's, it's the exact same thing, isn't it? Because they just need you. They need you on the page so they can get more ad impressions. Yeah. It's like, ah, frick them. That's the first ad. I hate game journalism. Ad, third All ad. game journalism. <laughs> Yeah, I hate it. I hate it so much. Um, <clears throat> but that's the game I'm interested in at the minute. I'm. I. I, I remember you mentioned it on like a phone call message or something yeah, like yeah. that. But I was purposely. I was like, I'm not going to look at it, so we can look at it on yeah, the show yeah, more. Yeah. I'm glad we you remembered first of all. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually excited about it. It's a, it's, it looks it's like really a game good. that we can really sink our teeth into. Yeah. Because yeah. we got properly into Division One, and then Division Two is just a bit. It wasn't really there. Mm. Uh, God, that party system was so good, though. Yeah. But um, I think it would be a game we'd really get stuck into. Let's see, man. Let's see. And it'd be good also because we could just fire it up. Like, oh, let's play for a couple of hours. Yeah, cool. I've got to go to bed. I've got to put Isla to bed or away. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, go put, put her away, away in the cupboard. In a cupboard. Yeah. She's the right size for it. Anyway, do we have topics? We do. We have a big topic. Two, okay. two, there's two topics, but there's a bigger one that I want to talk about yeah. in the beginning. But before we do that, bro, yes. first of all, I want to tell everybody to like and subscribe the video. Yeah, the, we remember. Channel. Because it helps the, the video and it helps the channel. It helps us grow. Thank you so much for your support, everyone. We really do appreciate, appreciate it. it. And if you enjoy any of the conversation that we have, leave some comments down below about what you think They're gonna your leave thoughts are. some comments. Put gonna... some comments down there. That's what you should put. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> 
If you really enjoy this episode, though, you can do what our boy, the crusty, Shepsis Crusty oh, Right Nut does, and head over to patreon.com forward slash conversations and uh, support us over there on Patreon, where you can get early access to this podcast, the day it's recorded. Yeah. You can have access to the post show, the bonus post show to our other podcast, the Conversations yeah. podcast, where we get all funny and unfiltered and stuff. Because we're not like funny, that. obviously, no, no, we're, usually. We're not very, this is a very serious podcast. It's true. Sterile, no. No, no laughs whatsoever. That's right. That's right. Just like that. That's why we're critiquing the costume design in, we, in the first Descender. Exactly. I think the thong, if it was just a hair thinner. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> it needs to be made out of like dental floss. <laughs> then it would be best. Yeah. So like and subscribe, we finally remembered it. Yes, please. And head over to our Patreon, that'd be great. If you don't yeah. want to though, no problem. Minimum tier of hundred dollars like. a month. <laughs> If you don't want to head over to Patreon, though, that's no problem. A like on the video, subscribe, yeah. a comment, stuff like that is just as good, as, and it's all free and stuff like that. And we I mean, it's not just as good. We won't read your name out. Well, yeah, I mean, you're not you're not no ships as crusty right now. I mean, <laughs> so, but that's one of the patrons, just in case you didn't know. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Just, I'm not just calling out his nut for no reason. <laughs> oh, there he is. Do you know what? I'm not even going to touch it. It's the wrong don't, podcast. Don't touch your nut. Don't touch your nut. God damn it. My battery's running out. Okay, good, good. good. Oh, no. <laughs> Mine <Okay>. too. <laughs> your laptop's still I, dead. It's still dead. <coughs> okay, here Topics. We Is the PlayStation VR 2 dead? Oh. So this I question wasn't expecting that. has come up in the gaming community. It's been a, a thought. Yeah, yeah. Amongst everyone for a while. For right. a while. And I'm not going to lie. I thought about it as well. I've had it yeah. in my head, but I haven't said anything because it was still new. I wanted to keep it. Yeah. I wanted to keep give it the chance. Fair enough. But after the most recent state of play where there was like one or two like mildly interesting looking yeah. uh, PSVR games and none of them being first party, the question has come up. What the hell's going on? Because we've had one first party game from from Sony yeah. for their own console, for their yeah, own yeah, yeah. thing. Their own fairly expensive device. Right? Yeah. It's like if you were to... Not uh, in the realm of VR, but just it's an additional device. Yeah, Right. If you're not going to spoil it, then how is anyone else going to spoil it? And a bunch of other people have come up with this. And there's been an article on uh, Android Central titled, <clears throat> Sony no longer cares about PlayStation VR 2 and neither should you. Before we get into that, can I ask you a question? Because I'm not in the VR space. Go I'm ahead. one of those guys, I immediately feel sick, nauseous. We played, was it like a racing game or something? I felt sick for, I had motion sickness or like, you know, seasickness or something like that for like four hours. It ruined my night. Yeah. Not ruined it, but like, I just felt queasy, man. Yeah, I remember. So I'm not involved in VR at all. How is the PSVR 2's life tracking compared to the PSVR? Because I don't, I didn't follow it. Much worse. Much worse. In my opinion, much worse. This okay. is all opinion based, obviously, because yeah, yeah, yeah. how do you track all this stuff, especially when it's such a small group? It's right. Like, yeah, yeah. When you have a small group of people, it's but hard to get a proper. In it. So, like, you keep your, your finger on the pulse. Me, I'm just like, oh yeah, they have a PSVR. Oh, they made a second one. Like, I don't, I don't follow the news. Don't know how many games are released, except what one I saw at the state of play. So, yeah, is it? It is like more of a desert than it used to be. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. There are games, yeah. and if you can't actually statistically how many games are there's like 200 games you can play on the psvr2 okay i mean that's not bad is that that's the thing when you when you actually tally up you're like well that's that's fairly decent yeah. it's just a matter of how many of them are particularly interesting to you i mean there's a, yeah. a, a million games on PlayStation. i've had right, right. i'm exaggerating but there's so many games on playstation how many of them do you play oh yeah like exactly not, well also like if you if you <laughs> primary gaming fix is like golfing games there's not a lot for you exactly. relatively to other stuff. So like, yeah, I totally get what appeals to you. I can see that being exactly. a part of it. <clears throat> there's that. And then there's also the idea that again, like a bit like yourself, not yeah. every VR game is going to be comfortable with every type of game. You're so right. some people want games that they can run in or something like that. Some people want games they can sit in. Some people want games they shoot in or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And again, that limits everything. So it really drives it down to what you're really interested okay. in. And then you end up with like, okay, there's like four or five games that I'm really interested in or yeah. that I can play. And once I play them, they're done. When's the next one coming out? Right. And then again, and then the question comes back to, well, how much of them are being made by a a, a studio that has the backing of like a multi billion dollar company? Yeah, <clears throat> you'd think that Sony would be like, oh yeah, we're, yeah. we're right there. They're going to be pumping out quadruple A, <laughs> perfect dark <VR> games. <laughs> 
<laughs> which they're they're very absent. So it's yeah. a, it's quite the desert at okay, the moment. Cool. Quite the desert at the moment. Um, let me read a bit yeah. of this article for you. <clears throat> uh, this is directly from the article, so you guys can go there if you want to. Android Central. Uh, until now, PlayStation VR two has pretty has been a pretty darn good headset with well over two hundred games currently available. The with several impressive releases like Horizon Call of the Mountain, Gran Turismo mm-hmm. Seven, and the duo of uh, Resident Evil Village and Resident Evil Four Remake. However, the headset has an insurmountable problem. Sony no longer cares about it. Sources close to Android Central have revealed that Sony is making deep cuts in the funding of VR games. While I paraphrase for anonymity, my source says that there will be very few opportunities for VR game development at Sony going forward. <clears throat> so. Well, I just want to preface by saying immediately prior to this, we'd said how much we don't like or trust game journalists. Yes. Um, so that's like one preface, preface. That's one thing before we get into it. Um, shit. Do we, do we trust Android Central? Android Central, I mean, the thing is that I don't trust really any journalist. Yeah, there, me neither. However, when we take those words and put it in the context of everything that's going around. It seems how, to fit. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. Like... It might not be the right puzzle piece, but it fits in the spot. So, exactly. yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, like, we've seen many articles of PlayStation, like, focusing their efforts on, like, the bigger games, like, The Last of Us and yeah. stuff like that, and producing the sequels to them because they're more, like, guaranteed hits, and seeing how much... <clears throat> um, how much investment they put into Spider-Man, for example, yeah. which was ridiculous, like, 300 million a for a lot. video game. That's too a much lot. for a video game. Yeah. I they, agree, actually. They clearly yeah. are airing on those sides. There's more more safer bets yeah, yeah. And stuff like that i think i think again and i think we said this at the time when psvr 2 was coming out that <clears throat> somebody had the idea that playstation vr 2 would be a good idea and convinced the people got the right tech and it is a very good headset and they were like cool we yeah, can do yeah, this yeah. and if we have the option we could open up to pc which they have done now as well so that's something as well but I think the landscape just changed too quickly that every, everything got so expensive. Mm. And also, VR didn't catch on in that time as, as people wanted it yeah, to. Yeah. So like the meta <sighs> quest and stuff like that came yeah. out. While some people have it, it's not like this thing that everyone has in their home just in case or something yeah. like that. And then, of course, there's the price of the goddamn thing as well being so high. I think a, a lot of factors pushed it into the not many people can buy this, want to buy this find it appealing yeah. all these kinds of things and sony saw that and instead of maybe trying to help the situation yeah, 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 by yeah. maybe injecting some life into it maybe chuck a couple hundred million into it they said when <clears throat> now nah, we'll just kill this while it's early while it's early uh in in its life it's a weird one because like devil's advocate you'd think like okay things are expensive it's a much smaller money maker it's just a smaller audience and those games just aren't priced the same and all of that <coughs> on the other hand like you say if they made some really good games maybe that would change but it also looks like VR isn't like when, when VR started coming out people were like it's good. basically in five years it'll be like the holodeck on Star Trek like no nah, it hasn't turned out that way which is fine because like the, as a piece of kit the PSVR 2 is very good yeah. it's very good at its price point but yeah it's a tough one yeah I, it really sucks <coughs> to hear that Sony is like potentially ab- abandoning it because it's a cool niche to be in. It's going to be one of those upsetting <laughs> stories from years to come. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I do see it going to be the way of like the dodo where it's going to die out, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. which is really sad, especially because I'm one of the guys I bought one day one as well. Yeah. But it's it's going to be very sad because as <clears throat> we said many times and everyone agrees, it's just a great piece of kit. It is a, it is. A, Especially at the price point, it's so good. Yeah, it, that's the thing. It's it, and also with the, the price is good, they make, but the value for what you get is very good. That's the and, issue. And with things like <clears throat> not to just hop on the Sony uh, pony and ride it, but the three D audio that they do, like that's very. It all is. All the pieces line up for it to be a hit. Yeah, because of all the Sony stuff that they do. Yeah, it does kind of suck. It's going to be one of those very upsetting stories in the future. Yeah. I know it. It's going to be like, damn, what happened to that thing? And they're going to they're going to properly lay out. They're like, 
Yeah, it's, it's unfortunately it didn't have as much legs yeah. as Sony thought. Otherwise, they maybe would have invested more. But there will always be the caveat that Sony killed it way too quickly. Yeah, I think opinion. that's probably true. Because end of the day, they have a bit of disposable cash. They've got a bit. They, they make some money. They make some money. So they could att- they could throw some money at it and maybe make a couple more games. Apparently, it says here that um, another source uh, came to him and said there are two PlayStation VR games develop- in development okay. of Sony. And... That's also and and also at the same time they're closing studios that make VR games yeah, as well yeah, yeah. within Sony. So it's like that should be like like your other ones. It should mm. be like okay, there's what well, there's ten games coming uh, yeah, yeah, to yeah. PlayStation Five. There should be five coming to, to PlayStation yeah. I feel VR. that. I'll tell you from my perspective, as someone that doesn't care, not doesn't care about. I actively dislike VR because it oh. doesn't. It makes me feel bad. Um, I would really like them to keep investing in it. Because, not for VR per se, but this feels like an alternate timeline for the DualShock. Yeah. Because you know when the uh, the DS4 came out and, and the DS3 and we had all of the stuff that no one ever used. Yeah. But that lays the groundwork for the DualSense. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I do think if you don't have the DualSense <clears throat> series of controllers... You don't. Sorry, the Dual Shock series yeah. controllers. You don't end up with the Dual Sense, which is a fantastic controller. It's so good. The Rumble Packs are so incredible, and that <clears throat> came out from all the lessons that they learned from. Like, well, okay, the no one actually uses it to steer, so we don't need that in the controller. But what have we learned from all the input data that we've got? Yeah, yeah. Right. What? How are uh, to improve the sensors, and what are the things that are used most, and what games do people turn the sh- the, the um, rumble packs off for all that stuff. If you don't have that, you don't end up with the dual sense. Dual sense is an incredible controller, yeah. and there is an alternate timeline where they do an Xbox and they just keep releasing the next redesigned controller. It's just another controller with a couple of rumble packs. New color, yeah. right? But there are some fun, interesting mechanics with it. Like we don't use it for steering games, like it was <clears> sort of designed to be. But some t- in some of those games, you do have some controller input and. When it's done correctly, it, it's quite good. It adds to the immersion. You feel involved. Or like I, uh, Spyro does it. Like with that, with that thought, this is upsetting now. I'm almost treating it as if it's already dead. Yeah, because it, it feels that way. Like, I just think, to like, me. how much optical stuff have they done for that? How much can that improve? I was going to say... Like, Even TV screens. Let's say they take all the lessons they learned from that and just make the next... The, the dual sense version of a TV screen. Yeah. If that was it. With... With... Uh, what was I going to say? With... Um, in like PC gaming, yeah, for example. Yeah. In fact, this is with console as well. They came up with the revolutionary DLSS on NVIDIA. Yeah. The, the new way of like upscaling that was like way better than just simple like making the thing bigger because yeah. it made it all grainy and whatnot and like blur sorry blurry and stuff like that that was revolutionary technology and now it's used in literally everything, everything. to upscale yeah. and it's so much better it's the standard for technology this foveated rendering thing yes it's like only renders the highest quality stuff of the thing that you're looking at and the stuff are on the peripheral a little bit more blurry and it saves rendering and stuff like that. Yeah. Combine that with the eye tracking is so cool. Such a revolutionary technology that had uh, VR taken off. Yeah. I guarantee you everyone else would have done exactly oh, for the sure. same thing. For sure. 100% would have been the same. But, and that is something that potentially we're going to lose to time now yeah. because like this super amazing idea is just going to be kicked away to the side. And that's really upsetting as well. Personally, I thought we would end up with something more like... Uh, I, I don't after the few years I I would tend to be in the camp of like I don't think VR is what you know it's not going to end up as a holodeck yeah. right but I could see a world where we end up with like a Sony you know like the Google Glass where you have a headset with glasses yeah. that add to the foveated rendering mm-hmm. stuff and then you get all the the savings of you know performance savings because you're only really high performance rendering what you're looking at mm. I mean yeah you're the dickhead that has the headphones <laughs> and the the Sony glass, let's call it. Patent pending, you're not allowed to um, Sony. trademark. We've already trademarked it. We said it, so therefore it's trademarked. It's just, it might have your name in it, but... <laughs> <laughs> 
Like I could have, I think that's probably the way that it might have gone. Imagine you have that and Sony takes all of its lessons from the PSVR 2 because they also make TVs mm. and suddenly like you don't have to have one but if you get, a, a, let's say a PS6 and a Sony TV and the headset, it's like unparalleled. Mm. There is a timeline where that is the way it goes because of all the lessons they learned from the PSVR 2 and they go like, look, you know, end of the PS5 life cycle. VR hasn't taken off, but we've learned some incredible things. Here's what we think is the next step. And it looks like what I just said. As an example, that would be cool. Because that foveated rendering is really interesting. It's a really cool idea. Yeah. And also the fact they managed to make it at that price point is nuts. There's got to be some cool stuff they can do with it. But if they let the project die, it's going to be one of those things that gets like mothballed. Mm. And this isn't, you know, we don't have a Bruce Wayne to come in and ask about the tank. Yeah. You know, we don't have that. So the only lifeline is that now that it's open up to PC, maybe some developers will, will make will make use of the technology yeah. in there. And maybe PlayStation will see like a resurgence there. However, and this is the one. This is one of the downsides. One of the many downsides to the to PC and the PC community is that PC actively hates anyone outside of Steam. So yeah, I feel what you're saying. So the fact that it just has a PlayStation logo in it, they'll be like, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to use it. I do agree. I definitely. First of all, yeah, I actually totally. Agree Wait, with I have that. to click on a PlayStation button before. Oh my god! Right. The worst thing in the yeah, world. Yeah, they, they do seem to take a lot of that stuff very personally. Too personally, and like, and it's only ever uh, only ever made uh, okay because another bunch of other stupid people say the same thing. Yeah, and they're like, oh well, but other what, people agree with me, so I must be right. What I'm really right, hoping right. for is that some hyper autistic developer who just loves VR and loves the PS VR two makes an indie game specifically for it or like with that in mind mm. like i'm talking the guy that will that will live on noodles <laughs> for five years and is allergic to to women i'm catching strays here Shit. You know what I'm <laughs> um, just sitting here bro what like, I do? <laughs> make just like hardcore puts in like 12 hour day sessions developing this thing and it just is you know mind-bogglingly good that'd be because amazing these games exist right these there are games that come out com- completely from the indie scene mm. that that change everything. Like, uh, was it Fez? Yeah. With the th- it was a 2D platformer that, that rotated. Like, that was, that's not a thing that was around before. Yeah. And now everybody goes, oh, we can do that and it can be done and we can see this guy's engine that he built the engine to build it. And so, like, I want one of those nerds to build something for it and then everybody goes, oh, shit, there's something here, right? Maybe it's not VR in the way that we're used to playing VR. Maybe you use the VR headset, but you just use it as a TV screen to re- play a regular game, if that makes sense, mm. for the foveated rendering and and other stuff, but I mean that's a long shot, isn't it? That that's very long shot. That's just hoping that there's somebody or a small team out there that is dedicated, loves this thing, and sees something nobody else sees, and can make it, and can release it, and is good enough at marketing to get it out there, and enough people pick it up, and enough people enjoy it that we then hear about it, and even then, it's only going to do anything with it, probably not proper wishful thinking in it. it is it's really sad this is the thing that's upset about it. i mean there's there's multiple there's so many problems as well that can't be overcome as well over can't be over can't be overcame obstacles obstacles, obstacles in the that way you cannot that you cannot get past <laughs> um the convenience factor We've yeah. grown so accustomed to the way that we play video games now yeah. like a controller in your hand go yeah. That is it. Sometimes you even forget you have a controller in your bloody hands. If the, game, when if the game's anywhere near good, I forget I'm holding something here for sure. Exactly. The difference between that and then putting on a headset, yeah. getting in the correct position, making sure the lenses are all clean, put, setting it up, setting up your play area virtually inside the system, getting the controllers on your hand, which is a bit finicky because you've got a fucking headset on your head. Yeah. So like that. And then getting into it and then picking a game that, that you want to play. And I... And having the options of many games as well, yeah. it's, there's just too many hurdles to get yeah, into that. Too many steps where you lose people along the way. And I mean, I've said it. I've said it to Giuseppe. Giuseppe's playing uh, f- um, Cyberpunk. Yeah. And I said, he said to me, "Have you played uh, Phantom Liberty?" And I was like, "Do you know what? I started playing it and I stopped I only either. because it's on PC and it is a hassle to start playing on PC." 
booting it up and then afterwards getting your controller plugged Damn. in and making sure the drivers are all up to date and stuff like that make sure the settings are all to the right spot that like it doesn't drop all frame rate and whatnot it's a minor inconvenience don't get me wrong yeah. i'm not trying and to make you've it done it and if you're playing it regularly it's exactly yeah. it's a minor inconvenience i'm not trying to make it out like pc gaming is the worst thing in the no world. but like with a with a console you press the power button on your controller and it's done it's for just you. that yeah. it's just that it's and, just done for you and even that has pushed me to like oh and that's sort of the thing as well with um with Baldur's Gate because I bought that yeah. on PC because I thought okay mouse that's and keyboard really is definitely good. where it's gonna be oh yeah because you no way I'm playing that fucking controller that's the yeah, worst yeah. way to play things play that <clears throat> so and that's the reason why I haven't jumped back into that which BG2 really is so good really annoys me because um one of our boys I've got about hundred hours on it and I'm maybe seventy percent of the maybe way I through stop playing the fucking Witcher and go it's to that. <laughs> so good it's so oh look don't get me wrong. And sorry, just a bit of like Witcher versus BG3. Combat's nowhere near as engaging because you're not actively doing as much, but it's still very, very enjoyable. And the story is so good. Yeah. It's so good. It's so good. And you can do because of how much variety is in it. Although the combat, like physically doing the things, you click a button and it occurs versus like doing combos and, and stuff. Um, because of all that variety, you can be so creative. There's so many things you can do. It's just oh, it's so good. Well, I may have another reason why I can't play it. It's because my girlfriend spoke with her cousin in, yeah. in Poland. And she apparently has got her into uh, Sims mods. Oh, and she gave her a whole just thing. Just tell her it's a Sims mod. <laughs> tell her it's a Dungeon Dragon Sims mod. Here, go for it. She goes, I get a mod where they all speak me, me, me. <laughs> she goes, oh, I've got all these mods for you. She gave her the download and she's got this whole like selection of What is it with Girls in the Sims? That's a genuine question I want to know. It's a... Look, let's be honest. We, we all have our own... I don't know other genetic, people like the, the we Sims. Have, we have our own genetic urges, right? Oh, yeah, it's on the X chromosome for sure. I say, on, on the Y chromosome, we have grilling, we have making fire. Yeah, yeah. We have that kind of stuff. Yeah. With on the on the rest on that little leg that's missing is the nurturing, making a home, mm -hmm. uh, creativity, pretty things and stuff like yeah, that, yeah, which yeah. we just we just don't understand. We can't we can't conceptualize it. Do you know what's funny? And unfortunately, the existence of that negates the rest of the why, so they can't understand what the fuck yeah, we're on yeah, about. Yeah. It's one of the things, one of the great mysteries of life. <laughs> it's it's hilarious. I saw this um, meme. I guess it was a meme. It was like a thing on TikTok or Instagram. This chick was like voicing over you know doing like had the sound playing it and she was like i just bought a five thousand dollar gaming rig she's showing off her actual gaming rig and then uh the girl the girl's like we're gonna play the sims and she was like and it was actually like it was all she had on it was the sims and it was like a monster water-cooled rig and like and then after the like sound she was like Basically, like, yeah, I'm catching strays out here. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, wow, friendly fire, friendly fire. <laughs> but like, they just, as a as a general comment, you can say that most girls are going to really enjoy The Sims for something about, uh, equally, like, for example, I absolutely hate base building. Yeah. It's the thing I like least in gaming. Um, I, and I love that some people do it. And that I think is like the boy version of the Sims. So people that spend all their time in like Fallout 4 yeah. and all that stuff, building their bases and stuff. I just, you know, I'm a Harry Potter nerd as much as I give you a uh, shtick. And then when we were playing uh, Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah. And you open up like the room of requirement. And like, yeah. Here's your base. I'm like, sick. And like, look at all the stuff you can do. I'm like, cool. Next mission. <laughs> Next side mission. I'm sorry. You know, like. Let me go and do 50,000 uh, Merlin quests <laughs> instead of this. I'm just not interested. But yeah, The, the Sims is a, is a crazy one. I like The Sims. Have you seen the, you, the also, YouTubers? Also, you play The Sims as well. You've played it a bit. <clears throat> yeah. I played it a bit. I'm more of an Age of Empires kind of guy, yeah, but yeah, it's in that. the realm of the same sort of do thing. Do you know what's interesting? There is... I've been learning Python, if you're like new around here, and coding stuff. There is an old, I think it's like Age of Empires 3 port that is like not uh, under license or something or it's okay. different enough and I could host it on my Raspberry Pi so we could play a private 
Age of Empires game against each other. Interesting. But like me running it. And I was like, oh, I'm never going to do this. And now suddenly I just remembered you play it. You just turn off the Raspberry Pi when you lose oh, it. As soon as I lose it, <laughs> like, click. Sorry, man, what happened? Oh, power cut. It doesn't say there's we're, any power cut. We're still on Discord phone. talking, though. Uh, it's on my phone. It's on my phone. <laughs> uh, run away. <laughs> I, uh, what was I going to say? Um, oh, yeah. There's some YouTubers that I watch occasionally. Yeah, yeah. Um, of girls playing The Sims, and it's the 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 proper the high level Sims where they've got all these crazy mods and okay, they all do okay. straight these crazy things. And The Sims is so chaotic in its nature yeah. that it becomes fucking hilarious. And then also the reaction from the YouTubers where it adds to the whole thing. There's inst instances where like something happens in your home yeah. and all of your Sims can die, but from ridiculous shit like there's a fire in the kitchen. Yeah. And the sim is like panicking, like, oh my god, we're going like that, we're going like that, and runs outside. And it's like, no, get back and put out the fire, or at least call 911 yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. that. They try and like click the actions, but the sim is in such a panic, and it's coded to be this yeah, way, yeah, yeah. That, that it's just ignoring all requests right now because it's just too panicked right now. Goes outside into the garden. The garden happens to have a graveyard where like people have been buried before. Okay. <laughs> A ghost pops out and the ghost scares the sim to death. And it's like, how is the house uh, on fire less deadly than the ghost? <laughs> that actually sounds pretty funny. And I'm like dying, just pissing myself. And then it's a chain of events. Then the people come outside to check on the, the sim that died. Yeah, yeah. And that sim is now a ghost. So they die because they've seen a ghost. <laughs> and in that like two minutes, you've just killed the whole fucking That's family. pretty funny. That is pretty funny. <laughs> But I don't think you need a rig like that to play The Sims. That's <laughs> yeah, all I'm don't, saying. Don't. I don't think you need that. Anyway, play Baldur's Gate 3. It's really good. I would like to go. I think I should do that. I think I should give what, How did we get onto this tangent? I've totally Very forgotten. Good question. Very good question. There is a timeline. Oh, convenience of, uh, of game SFP. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There is a timeline oh. with this whole Sony PSVR 2 stuff yeah. where Xbox realizes, like, we have been saying since like the dual shock, uh, dual sense that Xbox just did the next one and Sony innovated that there might be a timeline with enough adoption, enough good games out there that Xbox goes, actually, we could do something like this. Maybe we can be competitive in this space, or maybe we can take the lessons that Sony's learned and pivot from that and make something good. I worry about that as well. Not just that, you know, there's a niche market that's missing out and that there's possible tech advancements and stuff, but that yeah. it's another realm that would give anybody with some creativity an option to um, to show what can be done. And I feel like, ultimately, Xbox needs that. Mm. And they have enough good studios with <clears> enough <throat> talent that you cannot deny if they, if they had a good idea, they could make it. And I'm not saying it would be a VR game, but maybe it was like, it'd be a... A, a regular console game with an altered reality aspect to it. Something like that. Yeah. Right? Like, um, oh, we were just talking about um, the first Ascendant. Mm. What if the next step in gaming is that they take the HUD off the screen and they put it on your, like, Sony glass or your gaming glass or whatever oh. you call it, right? So your HUD is with you wherever you look. So, like, let's <clears> say, <throat> how often have you been doing something, you have to pause the game, turn to your missus and you forget to reload or whatever but if your HUD's still with you game's pause being like yeah talk to your missus or do whatever you need to do and you're like oh yeah I need to reload and I'm gonna get that special grenade on we're gonna die to this boss back in the game because you had your HUD I'm up sure the whole time that's the point. well of course yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean that's just a crappy example but yeah. I feel like thanks for the agreeing with me bruv I appreciate it's the support always I, agree. Yeah, I appreciate the support I just I feel like the more um, roads there are for people to take the more options exist for great things to be created no matter where they come from and when one of those roads shuts down because I do feel like the PSVR 2 is uh, leading the way is not the right word because obviously you've got MetaQuest <clears> and other stuff but at the price point with the interesting tech that it's got it is a very compelling option Yeah, and it's also probably the cheapest way into VR. If you wanted, if you want a good computer with a good, you know, VR headset, that's probably going to be a lot yeah. more expensive than getting a PS5 and a PSVR2. And you've got some very good tech in the PSVR2. 
So I think that is a very significant road in the VR direction that shuts down. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly I think that's likely to stop a lot of these other companies really investing or they're going to start moving away from it. Yeah, And that bothers me because there are definitely some great games that can be made in that media and some great lessons that can be learned. Things that, look, there's stuff that we don't know we don't know, mm. right? Without someone making those mistakes or trying the thing and they tried the thing but it didn't work, but it didn't work because it was 2024 and now it's 2030 and we can do that thing that I played when I was, you know, 20 and I just loved and I've been wanting to make it again but now we have the tech and I can make it happen. That idea never happens. Do you know what I mean? I know it's an impossible thing to calculate, but without someone trying this stuff, yeah. it. I do worry that you know you said you said sterile earlier. I worry that gaming is going that way. That, and same with movies. Like how many movies have come out in the last few years that are, are new? Most of them are remakes or sequels. And like, <clears throat> well, let's get some new ideas out there. Let's get someone doing yeah. something creative and interesting. And they're just not really doing it. I will say. <clears throat> That is that is definitely what we need to do. Yeah. But you know what? People are discouraging that, unfortunately. Like the amount of time someone tries something new, because it's far easier. This is just the pessimism of the world we yeah. live in, especially nowadays. Um, it's far easier for them to shit on something because yeah. they see a minor flaw in it. Right, or maybe right, it is like flawed, it. Yeah. but they're trying. This is the thing that so they can feel good about themselves that yeah. it discourages people from making something new. Like this Concord thing, I've said my f share about it once and then I moved on from it. Yeah. But people are constantly like, they did. A, they released a trailer for the upcoming beta yeah. for this Concord like live action game. I think it's going to be crap. I don't. I don't think it's anything that I'm going to enjoy. Yeah. But people are in the comments like, "Lol, was it dead on arrival?" I'm yeah. Like, Why are you? You don't have to be that way. Why are you being that? Do you want nothing? Do you want nothing? Well, and the happen? other thing is like, if they have something good, they'll complain <clears throat> about it. Like you said, because they see a minor flaw, they don't like something tangentially related to it. Sometimes it works. We see. We saw it with Superman, the new Superman. In every category, better than Henry Cavill. Better suit. Better director. Better dick. Better dick. Better movie posters. Yeah. yeah. All because people rightly complained about Zack Snyder and Henry Cavill. You know? And so yeah. we upgraded. We upgraded. But it can't all go that way. They're, they're rare. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, they people just wanted to complain, so they complain about <clears throat> Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, and Justice League, and then look what we get now. And I look, I want the movie to be good and all that stuff, but we had a discussion about the Superman suit yeah. from the poster and you really hated it. And I was like, ah, oh, I could, maybe it's just a bad pose and stuff. We've seen more shots. You're a hundred percent right. Yeah. It is an awful suit. It's just bad. It's just bad. It's the, I, I think I mentioned this to somebody I was having a discussion with. We'll get off of this very quickly. I was like, maybe, I was like, no promises. It's it's like if you tell an AI program what Superman is supposed to be. Yeah. They're like, oh, he's supposed to have a red and blue suit with like hints of yellow in there. Yeah. It's supposed yeah. to be like an S on there, but we're trying to make a new suit, so try and make something like original on there. And he's supposed to have a flowy cape, and that's what it pops out with. Yeah. And it sees previous examples of superheroes in like the MCU, for example, yeah. with those like over designed suits, leather jackets, yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff like that, and then blopped on those colors and went, there you go. Yeah. Soulless, yeah. It, it, it does, Not definitely art, feels that way. It just yeah. it just feels like that. That's that's in my opinion. But also, my opinion means jack shit. Okay, don't even fucking take my opinion for anything. I'm just a guy with an opinion online. Okay, don't try and come at me because people have come at me. <laughs> and the thing is, learn because just to stick on the Superman thing as an analogy for gaming and stuff going the wrong way is we had something great that wasn't perfect and people complained about it so loudly that they changed so drastically that we now have something that is definitely <clears throat> not great. Yeah. And I think the guy, I think the the guy playing Superman might be good. Yeah. I have no idea. I don't know anything about the dude. He might be great, but he's stuck in a terrible suit. Like that's, that's going to break immersion. He doesn't look heroic in comparison to like a Henry Cavill. Yeah in that suit and that does him a disservice there's no way he can fully succeed because no matter what even if it's the best Superman film they make which I doubt but I hope he's just we're going to compare him to that Barbie you've got there and it isn't going to be the same yeah. and we're going to like we're just going to know this actually brings me to 
an interesting point that I wanted to bring up last week, but I decided not to, but we'll, bring, we'll talk about it now. I think this same thing is going to happen in gaming in regards to The Last of Us. <clears throat> so people hate Neil Druckmann. Yeah. Despise him to the point that... I know online, like Twitter and stuff like that, isn't a real place. To no, like, not at all. Don't take anything they say yeah. seriously. But every tweet, if you mention Neil Druckmann, oh, fucking I hate this guy. Yeah. And it's a mixture of things. For some reason, everyone thinks he's like a Zionist. And I'm like, I don't know if that's true or if he's... I also don't care. I think he's I think he's Jewish. I th- you think Probably. I think he's Jewish. And I think he he stands up for Jewish people. And I'm like... Okay, has he said he wants to kill people or something like that? Because I would, put, I'd say that would make. The, again, don't don't I, care. I don't know. Yeah, don't I care. Don't. But at least if that was like, if he said like, I want to cause harm to uh, Palestine, yeah. then then I'd be like, cool, I'm on your side now. He said this shit, yeah, sick yeah. shit. Okay, but he hasn't said anything like that. So I don't know. As what, far as I've seen, anyway, it's just yeah. the internet I don't being, follow the guy being stupid. I think. Anyway. Also, also, but, I don't follow the guy. He writes a story. I enjoyed the story in its media form. Right. Not, but a lot of people, yeah. a lot of people, simply hate him because of the Joel thing. Right, a lot of people are maybe I'm like, this is a really crazy thing for you to hate yeah. someone for. That's an insane thing, yeah. and it's the same. It's like, big man, it's like Zack Snyder again. So we're hating him anyway. And I think all of the hatred that's going over there, all of these people yeah. that are just online, so they can be like, I hate this thing. Isn't that right, guys? Isn't that right? I'm, I'm, do you like me? Can we you give me agree. a like on my tweet, please? Thank you so much. Thank you. I get the attention from all these other toxic people. I now. hate Neil Druckmann. I hate Neil Druckmann. Right. Yeah. All because of that, I think it's going to negatively affect the next game. I think you're right. I think it's going. I also think they shouldn't have made it. They fuck it all up. It, but yeah, I think it's going to fuck it all up. Yeah. I think. Unfortunately, I mean, I think Neil Druckmann is only human and all the people in that yeah. project are only human. I mean, we've seen an even get worse... showered with hate and it's going to turn out to be a shit product. Even it? worse um, observation of that happening, Hogwarts Legacy, which we just spoke about. Hogwarts Legacy itself, incredible game, built in a world made by somebody that other people hate, mm. which, f- fine, like... I don't, I'm not going to defend a fucking billion. I don't care about um, JK Rowling. I don't care. Good what goodness. I care about is that the game was made by people that were passionate about the world and it was made in the right way and it right. was good. Yeah. And it's pro- we're probably not going to get another one. All because you guys wanted to be online to, um, <clears throat> what's it called? Virtue Signal online to be like, yeah. I'm supporting this. Like, I hate JK Rowling. This game. So I'm going to go after these devs that have nothing to do with her. The lack of remorse. I think remorse. they even specifically said like she's not got any input in the game. It's just in her world. It's just that she's going to profit from it. Well, which of course. Is true. Yeah. Which goes to IP. Oh no, a but billionaire's going to make money as the, if other billionaires aren't making the bombs that are being dropped all over the world. Right, right. Like It's the lack of remorse that got yeah. me and that's why I couldn't be on their side. I yeah. couldn't be vocal about anything because they were just like, well, these people might lose their jobs. No word, no word, yeah. no no. no or like some of them are attacking the, the devs like you're, you're building this thing and like she's awful and it's like yeah but they don't have anything to do with it or her and they yeah. built a game that when you play it it's so obvious that the team that built it cared mm. which is the worst person to be attacking in this space they built something genuinely creative genuinely interesting mm. I felt like I was at Hogwarts like it was it was good combat was fun story was good I was, had some weak spots but what game's perfect and we're probably not going to get another one because some billionaire somewhere said something shitty and this team that wasn't involved with it, that happens to be involved in a project that's based off their previous work. And that, also they got attacked. If you were that team, are you going to stay in that job? I probably wouldn't. No. Like it, it, that is the exact worst thing. Like I get it. J.K. Rowan's a piece of shit. So what? She's a billionaire. You, like, you, you don't need to say it twice. No. She's a billionaire. Most billionaires are a piece of shit. Like... <laughs> The only saving grace for that team, like had the boycott been successful, right? The ramifications of that, like the the team, yeah, yeah. the amount of jobs that would have been lost. Let's say that in that time as well, like some of them had families, they had babies, yeah, they yeah. bought a new house or something like that. They're now in financial ruin. Who knows what could have happened? I'm talking about the worst case scenario. Yeah, yeah. Here. They lose their job. They lose their house. They really go into cr- crazy debt and stuff like that. God knows one of them has a medical issue. It's America. His wife can't pregnant. afford to do anything they have like the baby, that. but it's actually quadruplets. All the quadruplets need wheelchairs. Exactly. I'm talking about th- these kind of things can happen, yeah. right? And they lose their jobs. 
That's the that's what could have happened. Thank God the boycott didn't work. Yeah, and that the game actually did sell. So at least everyone got paid for this project, yeah. and then we and, the, and then they're safe. It does mean going forward yeah. we we don't get shit like this. And now maybe the the higher ups, the C suite execs, see actually it's not worth buying the license for something super yeah. expensive like this because look what happened last time. Look at the we hate only we got. just yeah. got out of it. Like yeah, we made money, but is it worth it to our like PR? Yeah. And, let's it, say, and, let's and, it, make a and it might then. be something you you don't actively dislike, like yeah. uh, J.K. Rowling. It might be like, let's pretend Star Wars is really loved right now. Yeah, the next Star Wars thing might be like, well, fuck, why should we pay this much money on right. that? Yeah. Indiana Jones, whatever the next thing is, and what James Bond. The other thing is, let's say it. let's say the team doesn't leave because everybody like they did make money. It was a success. Yeah. Do we think the next game is going to be made with the same sort of passion? Because those guys have had a very bad experience now. And let's say, let's when say the they, announcement trailer comes out for right. the very first time, they they're going to be covering their ears. They're going right. to be like, I don't want to look out there. I fucking don't about. You don't need to see. It's fine. Yeah. But also, like, part of the thing that made the game so good was it just sort of was a world with real real people and characters in it, right? And now, having seen how they were treated, what is the likelihood that they add in loads of stuff to try and distance themselves from J.K. Rowling that doesn't fit, not because it, it's a bad idea, but because they're shoehorning it in to try and distance themselves, and then the writing doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. Like, um, everybody was complaining about the game, and I, ironically, they have, um, as she said, some anti-trans stuff, I think is what it was. Yeah. In the game... A trans character saves your ass and is a fucking badass. The, um, the tavern owner. The tavern owner. <clears throat> I don't remember her name. But. She's fucking <clears throat> sick. She just stares down like a mega terrorist, right? And saves you. Just like, no questions asked. What a fucking gangster. Yeah. What an absolute gangster. And people are complaining. And it's like, well, look how they actually treated this character in the game before the JK Rowling stuff came it's out. It's not even. This was, that was done before that. It's not even about proof anymore. It's about it, their agenda. Right. And, and so, that's what's so sickening about it. And now what if stuff, they just, they just chuck stuff in and it's like, well, here's this fun mission. But before we can do that, here's 10 minutes about why how we're not transphobic. It's like, but you, you showed me perfectly that you weren't mm. by having a tavern owner who has no business being an OG badass. <laughs> Just like staring down one of the most vile forces of villainy in the current era, mm. just because. Like, that that's what I need to see. It's a show-don't-tell thing, and now I, I worry that they'll put in just terrible writing, it will derail the story if we get the game, to try and distance from J.K. Rowling when they did the job well enough by just writing good characters and having them being awesome. Yeah. I don't know how you can... There's, there's no good outcome from attacking those developers... And I know, look, I know this is an old, for the this is old five news. Five minutes of, of enjoyment that you right. get online from people liking your. Tweet. And it's but like we say, it sterilizes the game. It, ster it sterilizes the content and the media, and we won't get. We will likely not get as good, as passionate, as interesting. And look, it, things are flawed. Like I'm, someone's going to be angry that the tavern was trans. Deal with it, mm. right? They're also a great character that was sort of functionally pivotal at the beginning of the game. Like, deal with it. Yeah. Or don't play the game. Yeah. But then you, you're going to sterilize it or go too far in the other way to try and like show that, oh, by the way, like imagine that scene. And she goes, and don't forget, I'm trans. Like, Yeah, you can imagine how, how yeah. fucking out of place. And tell them that the, the trans bar owner kicked you out. Yeah. Like, ah, oh, you didn't need that. Yeah, We, we know, like it's, it's in the game. And because she's a real character, a real character, she has a, a real life and it, she lives her real life yeah. and she's a fucking badass. Yeah. So it, it, I worry that that stuff's going to happen. And it's a, it goes back to Superman suit and the people had something great and they complained about it. And this is what's going to happen in gaming. They're just going to do the safe thing. Yeah. And the safe thing doesn't get you The Last of Us 2. The Last of Us 2 is fantastic. Yeah. Incredible game. Emotionally taxing. Oh my God. But like, <laughs> oh my God. But if you're doing the safe option, maybe you don't kill Joel. If you don't <clears throat> kill Joel, who's your villain? Yeah. And if, when you do kill Joel and you have your villain be someone that actually is also a victim, it's once you see the whole story, yeah, I still hate Abby, but it's much harder to hate her when when you see Joel, who we do know is the bad guy. Yeah. Like, 
you don't get interesting writing if you're playing it safe, if you're not willing to have some people be unhappy with it, you know? I just... I, I don't want a sterile environment for my games. I want people to try stuff and be brave and tell good stories and tell tough stories. Yeah. You know? It's the... Why is it in the world that the stupid people get to make the most noise and yeah, unfortunately yeah. it seems like influence nowadays? That's the that's the real tragedy of the world we're yeah. in at the moment. <clears throat> All right, the other topic that I want yeah. to talk about. Uh, Rolling Stones has learned that two of Umbrella Academy's showrunner Steve Blackman's projects that were in development at Netflix, Horizon Zero Dawn, one okay. of them, and the, uh, an original series called Orbital, are no longer moving forward. Oh, fantastic. I first thought to myself, I was like, oh, fuck, man, what the hell did they do? They, they messed this up mm. because that was one I was kind of looking forward to. Horizon Zero Dawn... Uh, Mech robots is kind of like post apocalyptic <clears throat> world, mech robots sold. It seems Hot amazing, redhead. right? Exactly. It was going to have this end. The Horizon franchise is so like beloved, but now by oh, wait, no, never mind. Female protagonist, no one cares. My apologies, I forgot about that. Cancel everything, guys. <laughs> 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 I was really looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, me too. And then I found out the reason why. And apparently, the the showrunner, the yeah. Steve uh, Black guy, Blackman, has had a bunch of like allegations come out to him from HR. That was such a like, funny slip. The Steve Black guy. Steve Black guy. Uh, <laughs> as a as multiple, like uh, he's apparently manipulative and has a chaotic uh, work environment and is fostering a toxic toxic workplace. I don't know the finer details of it, but they haven't said anything sexual. So I'm like, at least it's not that. <laughs> at least it's not that. <laughs> it's either- But then I was like, okay. But he made like three or four seasons of Umbrella Academy, right? I don't know the show. I think it's Carr keeps trying to desperately get me to watch it. It's it's quite decent. I like it a lot. Um, I'm definitely not watching it. It's very strange. So you have to be like, it's very different to anything you've probably seen. But the main thing that I would say is like, why is the show cancelled? Right. Because you could, there are other showrunners out right. there. There are some great showrunners out right? there. Right. I mean, presumably you had a script or something like that that you showed to me. Was like, I'll take, I'll take this on. Yeah. Or if you didn't have a script, even better. There's, there's a blank slate for somebody to work in. Why is it canned? I mean, also, unironically, you have The Last of Us, which did incredibly well. Yeah. Once season two wraps. Hey, you know how you did this incredible story in a post-apocalyptic world? How do you feel about that? But Robo dinosaurs. Robo dinosaurs. <laughs> like, like I said, there are other showrunners. Yeah, I don't know why this is cancelled. It's weird, isn't it? A very, very strange That's thing odd. here. And I don't think one person can tank a whole thing that bad, unless they come out on Twitter saying like J.K. Rowling stuff. But they're the guy in the project. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, my My Horizon Zero Dawn is a reimagining. <laughs> It's going to be set uh, during COVID and specifically follows uh, neo-Nazis. <laughs> like, okay, cool. Yeah, we're sc- that scrapped. Yeah, we might like, have to kill that cool. one, guys. <laughs> cool. Then I get why you scrapped that project. But just because the showrunner's a piece of shit, which may or may not be true, I don't know anything about it. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. I, I would think it's a bit strange if he made three or four... Is it, how many seasons of Umbrella Academy? Three, uh, three, three. seasons, yeah. Three seasons of, uh, as far as I'm aware, it's a relatively successful show. People that like it seem to really like it. You manage three seasons of that. I could believe it, but I could believe that he's a bit chaotic and stuff like because What creative type is it? Exactly, that's what I was going to say. When you get like those creative people that are, are fairly good at their job, yeah. they're very weird right. and like out there and stuff like that. But you just sort of like try to make it all work so we can get the good product at the end. Yeah. I feel like there's a, bit of, a few crybabies in, bet- in between. Whether or not it's true, I don't know. I definitely think there's some missing information here. But again, why is the show cancelled? Yeah. Like, have you Two heard? Shows. Have you heard about Blade, for example, the Marvel uh, movie? I only hear. I've only heard that the directors keep dropping out. Yeah, the yeah. directors keep just changing hands like yeah, every yeah. day. I don't know what's going on over there because surely they're like, okay, so this is the story we're going to tell. Yeah, I like that. And then they're like, I don't know, what does he get to speak to Mahershala Ali and he's like super like like a diva or something. And he's like, nah, I'm out. I'm yeah, <laughs> it's, I get, I would, if I had to predict for Blade, Blade is a much darker story than the current, current Marvel Universe is willing to <laughs> tell, I feel. Yeah. Uh, I feel like it's moved more away from like the uh, I was going to say do you reckon Marvel are trying to marvel fire and trying to make it a bit more family friendly and everyone who's jumping on is like no this is Blade bruv this is Blade you don't do this either family friendly or like maybe push an agenda maybe and the thing is and it might be Marvel might be Disney you know one and the same 
I'm of the opinion that old school Disney was more inclusive when it wasn't trying so hard. And when they try hard to do it, the, the we need to get this message out there overtakes the writing. Mm. And the thing about Blade is you're already set. Like you have Blade Black and was that way when he was created in the late 80s, early yeah. 90s, I think is when the Blade comics started coming out. Like, not, like that is the way that it is. And well, that's also, by the way, a really interesting metaphor because he walks in. He, I think he's technically mixed race, but it it it. That's one of the, so mixed race people have this weird thing where, like, if you're half black, mm -hmm. you're not like you're very obviously not white. But a mm -hmm. lot of the time they struggle because they're not black enough for a lot of black. Yeah, the, the black, black community, community seems to be like you're not black enough. Right. So you're in racism this, within the ra within right, their community. Right. So <laughs> so that is a very interesting. Uh, uh, social piece that you can look into yeah. because Blade specifically is in both. He cannot, he is not human. Yeah. He will live functionally forever. <clears throat> oh, and by the way, he eats people. Yeah. Like, I mean, he doesn't, that's sort of his thing, but he, he wants to, he, he has that desire. That urge, yeah. Right. Like the, his whole arc is trying to overcome the, uh, the hunger. And then vampires weirdly want him but to like tear him apart and study him because he can walk in sunlight. So he's not safe anywhere. Mm. No one wants him. Humans would want him dead if they knew about him and the vampires want him dead because he's Blade mm. <clears throat> or to study him and pull him apart and see how he's, you know, mm. like that is your social commentary. It, it's baked in. Yeah. You don't have to add anything to it. I worry that they're trying to push a message and like awesome. Blade, Blade's awesome. Blade's awesome. Have you watched the movie, the OG movies? Yeah. Yeah, of course you have. Of course you have. Even like, the bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Right. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, we're not going to go there. But <laughs> but that I suspect might be it. And I think the also because Blade isn't like a good guy. He's not uh, a hero per se. He's more of like an anti hero. Yeah. He's out there to kill vampires, not to save people. You save people by killing vampires, and he'll save someone from a vampire. Because he wants to kill the vampire. Yeah. That's his driving force, right? And he's like a bit of a loner. It's like him and Whistler, I think. And like the odd romance hero there. And then, but Blade knows it can never happen. Yeah. At best, he doesn't kill them. You know, one day like forgets his medication and eats them. Yeah. And then what? Gets to watch as the only human he's ever been able to connect with dies of old age. Just becomes this, yeah. you know, like. Moving out, come here. Yeah, exactly. It's awful. And, but that's sort of the draw. And that's why he's this perpetual loner. But then it's really hard to build like a team around Blade because that <clears> team's <throat> gone in 20 years, yeah. 50 years. If you all survive, you age out, you die. Like that, that that's sort of the tragedy of Blade. Mm. As what, But then there's also, well, he's got this awesome superpower, right? He lives forever. He can walk in the sun, super strong, you know, like. Yeah. Got those cool glasses. That's fucking cool. Great. The sword that will blow your hand up. Ooh! You know, like. <laughs> It's, it's, you, you don't need to add social commentary because it is a social commentary. That's its purpose. It was a lot more tact back in the day with where, the way they did things. Right. And nowadays, not so much. Same with things like Spawn. Have you seen Spawn? Tell me you've seen Spawn. No. Oh my God. You should see Spawn. It's a really good movie. Great comic series as well. Uh, and that also follows another black character who, not a good guy. Like he's, he's one of those like. Our favorite guys are not good guys. Right. <clears throat> He's one of those dudes who um, the show, the movie and the comic sort of initially presents him to you as like ex-special forces. And you're like, that's a good dude. Gets killed, goes to hell. Man, how does this guy go to hell? Turns out after leaving the military, guy's using those special set of skills for the top bidder. Guy's, guy's done some killing of people that maybe probably shouldn't have been killed. <laughs> right? Goes to hell basically makes a deal he returned comes back. the pizza that really was okay he was lying to the pizza guy right, right. fucking off this guy <laughs> yeah he started he started his 30 minute timer from the time he started dialing ah. until the guy was a minute late free oh, pizza God. comes out of the delivery guy's check right that type <laughs> of villain but like it's a great it's, it's great it's fantastic but it's also a dark story and like you don't have a real hero and mm. I don't think Marvel wants to do those sorts of things yeah but those are also great freaking stories. I'm actually really shocked they did so much with uh, the Punisher show. Yeah, that was a, unbelievable. Yeah, <clears throat> and I think and apparently they're, they're going to do that again with the. <clears throat> they're going to do 
<clears throat> Sorry. Make sure you cough directly into the mic, yeah? <clears throat> oh, we spent a lot of money on these bad boys. <clears throat> let, let them pick it up. Uh, apparently they're going to do uh, Daredevil the way they did on Netflix. Uh, that's what the rumors are. It's just, I have to see it to believe it. I don't yeah. believe Marvel, Disney, I don't believe they have the balls to do stuff like that. Yeah, they... they <clears throat> so we'll it's not see. like they can't. They, they have the talent, they've got the... They've seen that it works. I just think for whatever reason, they wor- worry too much about their S- image of it. Someone gets in their ear, someone yeah. says something, and it's like, it's something either that really is a faux pas to uh, disagree with them, yeah. to be like, oh, maybe I'm... I'm going to stay quiet because I shouldn't disagree with this yeah, thing because yeah. it could get me in trouble. And then the the stupid comment continues. It does. Or maybe there's just not enough people with That's, enough sack in the fucking yeah, in, the, in those comments. It's crazy. It's just like, actually, can we see, have, have this story instead? Yeah. And it, it is crazy because you see all of these great characters that are great because they're flawed and not perfect and they don't push an agenda. So like the, the Miles Morales, like I was I've been asking to do a Pete Miles, Pete Miles, you know, hop yeah. for the Spider-Man games. Um, f- there's, have you, do you know about all the electric heroes? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So like, I think my <clears throat> one, the one I grew up with was Static X or Static Shock. Yeah. Like that's a great hero. You don't have to do any pandering or anything because it's baked into the story. Mm. It's like, a, they're already the thing. You don't have to go that way because it's, it's there. There's, it's naturally going to come up. It's relevant, oh, right? No. So why can't we just have these great stories? You tell these great stories. And and also it, it's weirdly by them desperately trying to be like, I guess, let's say toxically inclusive. Yeah. They're excluding these great stories. So Daredevil, blind guy, blind, blind hero. Like, yeah. yeah, he has a superpower that functionally allows him to, to cope, but he is blind yeah. and in his day-to-day life he is blind yeah. that power only really works when he focuses and has enough going on right so that's your uh what was that disabled um disabled. yeah uh blade right you got all of that in there but again he's not exactly a good guy but it's an interesting story you yeah. got a lot to develop and i just think they want to play it safe and they want to play it too safe and that's how we get away from strong female characters that are flawed like you know um what happened with wanda yeah in the movies like she was a great villain and terrifying yeah. was it movies or the shows i forget yeah, which. Show and then the movie yeah, yeah. afterwards she's a great villain but that only works if you're willing to let her be flawed and yeah. and and make at Thanos level, like I get why you made that decision. It's not the right decision, but I get why you got there and I get the logic and it makes sense, yeah. but that's not the right thing to do. That makes people interesting. That makes things mm-hmm. interesting. And if you just go the way of like um, Captain Marvel, yeah. it's, again, it's sterile. Yeah. And you just have this, this power tripping deity going around, you know, stealing people's motorbikes because they're a, a dick. <laughs> you know, like, and that guy's a dick. Yeah, I get it. But like, it wasn't a good scene. Yeah. So yeah, ha- let people be flawed. Let your characters be flawed. Let your stories have, except that someone's going to be upset on every side. Like have a strong female lead to annoy the actual misogynists, but then have her be flawed and like, Show that there's gonna be growth can happen. In yeah, well, exactly. How like, can your character grow if they don't have anything to like actually overcome? Yeah. Or the show that really we should be talking about and why we haven't heard anything about is the God of War TV show. I'm so worried about <clears> that. <throat> I'm so worried, and I wish they would say something so I could get over. So I yeah. could either be confirmed in my worried. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> or non non confirmed in my worriedness. <laughs> So I can it's a know nice what, structured sentence. I just that. want to know what's going on. Yeah, I feel you. Right now we're in this limbo. We haven't heard any casting. We haven't heard any writing. Yeah, we've we no heard idea where it takes place. It's yeah. just Amazon are picked up. All right, see you later. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Years have gone by. It's Nothing. insane, <laughs> isn't it? It's absolutely crazy. That's probably the one I'm most worried about. Like, I had no fear about The Last of Us or Horizon Zero Dawn in that as long as I stick at least... The last one. Stick to the story. Mm. It's gonna be good. Yeah. You can't. It's a it's a zombie show. Yeah, you can't yeah. break it. Right. Like last, the, last, last of Us is just is just Walking Dead almost. Basically. Yeah. Walking the, Dead with a father daughter story. And, That's all you need. And we've done it many times. Exactly. Yeah. Very difficult to get that wrong, and they did it great. Um, 
Horizon is basically The Last of Us, but instead of the zombies, Dino Box. It was going to be a bit more interesting. It's like, all right, it's a bit more playing with the with the yeah. formula a little bit. Let's see how this can go. This could go really well, right? But God of War's very different. Very different. Quite the fantasy, foreign yeah, yeah. lands, and then there's this crucial father do- father son story that if they don't nail yeah. with the, the right actors, the right voice, the right, right like commanding presence, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how the fuck do you get any you do, of it what, Do you go with uh, Daniel for... Crazy thing. The other day uh, on Twitter, Christopher Judge's wife, girlfriend, not sure whoever it is, or wife or not, posted a picture of Christopher Judge just by the pool, enjoying and whatnot, and he was like throwing something. Motherfucker is still in shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like he's not a bodybuilder, but he's still in shape. He's in better shape than you and me, and he's our age combined, almost, yeah. Better than us by far. And then, and, and, and she literally went, I don't know, maybe she's probably seen our comments online going, our comments. Yeah. Going, and she literally says, like, to the people who say he's too old to play certain roles. Yeah. And I was like, Fair play. I agree, by the way, with her. Fair we, play. We all agree. And I was like, maybe it's worth him. You know, I was like, Amazon Prime, tag him immediately. I was like, Amazon Prime, explore this. Yeah. Because he's the voice. You know that. You'd nail it. You know Rosario, Rosario Dawson yeah. says that boss logic is the reason she was Ahsoka. Because yeah. he made that thing and someone enough people saw it, right? Yeah. Same deal. Yeah. Like, it's not that big of a stretch. It is not. Too hard to make him be Kratos, and we and do you know what? Don't do the origin story. Start him as Kratos. You don't have to worry. No one will ever see that he's, you know, not Greek. I've which I've, I still don't think is that big of a, to get Christopher Judge in. That's an easy workaround. Uh, I think the whole thing being like you have to paint your skin ash white anyway. Yeah, yeah. immediately negates everything anyway. Exactly. It's like, I, also, I, people Greece at the time so cl- came. People at the time came at me. It was like, oh, but he's he's black, and I was like. First of all, he's we're covering covered in, him up. We're going to cover him in ash immediately. And I'm sorry, but Greece is so close to Africa. They've uh, and Egypt and all that stuff. We can get a black guy to Greece very easily. <clears throat> exactly. This is not going to be a struggle. Yeah. And to, and is it getting away from source material? Yeah, a little bit. Is it a bit of like a writing, you know, conundrum? A little bit. But it's Christopher Judge. It's actually the guy. Yeah. Who is who is the right size, shape? And we're trying to make like for a, it. essentially a mythological character. Yeah. Because it, when you're when you're writing a, a game, for example, you can make them anything you fucking want them yeah. to be. It's hard to find somebody that's going to fit that. Yeah. He's perfect. How are you going to? He's the perfect cast. Exactly. But so. also, they have to make that decision today because he's yeah let's, older. I mean, how long is he going to be like that? I I wrote him off because I thought his surgeries were like, well, that's it. He's like too. He can't yeah. move properly. He can't do the stuff properly. But if she's confident enough, and he's they've clearly been having conversations in the background. Yeah. I want them to at least explore it. Yeah, let's see some to, test footage. Yeah, and I think. He's got quite like a, a big jaw and whatnot, yeah, yeah, yeah. which I think is a bit too big for like Kratos. This is nitpicking, by the way. But then I was like, when well, you chuck a beard, on, a beard it, on it, when you chuck a beard on it, it's gone. Yeah. I was like, fuck it, done. There's no problem at all. Done. There's no problem at all. And he's either going to be in heavy makeup or uh, some CG touch-ups. Yeah. So it's going to not be, there's not a problem, man. Yeah. He's the right guy for it. At least it. explore it. Yeah, he's the right guy for it. And all the action. The voice is, in, is, is worth any small sacrifices we make on the yeah, side. Yeah, I totally agree. And all of the action is going to have so much CG in it anyway because of the nature of Kratos yeah. that it won't be ridiculous like when you do a stunt double and yeah. for certain stuff. So it, if actors, no shade to actors because they do a lot of good stuff. Ben. stuff I couldn't do. Yeah, Ben. If actors who are... Their thing is acting. Their thing isn't heavy lifting or anything right. like that. Can do all kinds of action stuff, wielding fake weapons yeah. and stuff like that around. He can do it as well. Definitely. And then we'll, we'll get Also, who's to say the show needs to be... Uh, this is probably going to rub a lot of people the wrong way. Who's to say it needs to be that action-packed? I don't think... I think people forget that the story in God of War is actually fantastic. Especially 2018 and <laughs> Ragnarok, right? Mm. Yeah, the, as a game, you have to have lots of combat because you need something to keep you engaged. But f- to move the story along, mm. you you don't. How much combat was in The Last of Us? True. Almost nothing. True. I'm just saying, like, 
We need to hear more about this show. I really want to. I really, you know, I will, if they have Christopher Judge in it, I will be a lot more comfortable that if the show fails, it'll be for bad writing. Yeah. You know, which it could well do. If they put Christopher Judge. And I also wouldn't, wouldn't put any of that on him. I wouldn't be like, you ruined it, Christopher Judge. Like, no, shut up. You're an idiot. Why? Maybe it's because we were such God of War fans. Maybe because I'm just, that's all I want to think about. But wouldn't it be sick if they could get Daniel Basuta to play Freya, if they could get Christopher Judge to play Kratos, and they could get, uh, what's his name? Sonny. We'll cut his legs off so no. he can be a kid. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking... He's uh, really tall now. I was now. thinking of Mimir, but that was making him I'll cut his head off and whatnot. No, but um, I've forgotten his name. I don't know who you're talking about. Either. Duncan... Oh, for Thor. No, no, for, for, for Mimir. Oh, yeah, I forgot his name as well. He's really good. Also, that is as Michael simple as a, that is a, a blue suit yeah, up to here. Even then, I mean, like, they've got their ways they figure out in, in, yeah, yeah. in, uh, in, in Hollywood and stuff like that. But his, their voices are just too iconic. Yeah. They, it was perfect. <clears throat> and if they can get it in there, 90% of the way there. Yeah. We're 90% of the way there. Agreed. Totally agree. <laughs> And that isn't just us simping because we love the game and they are perfect. They were perfectly casted. Yeah. It still works. Yeah. So why wouldn't you? But again, you know, we've seen Sam Witwer not get picked for roles that he was literally the guy that, you know. Insanity. So it, who knows how they do this stuff in, in Hollywood. Yeah. All right, bro. That's all the topics that we have yeah, for today. Buddy. Thank you guys for tuning in for another episode the uh, the True Gamer Podcast. It's one of two possible podcasts. The True Gamer Podcast. Uh, we will see you the next week. Uh, you started the, in French and now you're like... I don't know why I am right now. Some, you, you sound like... Let me just cover all of the bases <coughs> and offend everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. We appreciate all of the likes and the support and everything you guys give us here on Patreon and everything like that. Uh, we'll catch you guys all in a couple of weeks. Uh, next week will be the tr the Conversations podcast. If you want to go check that out, link will be in the description to the other channel. And uh, we have some funny jokes over there, so you can uh, come check us out. Um, bro, thank you for joining me. And goodbye. You sound like you like want to no, say I something. Like you were going to say something, and then oh, no, I don't want to say anything to you. I really just, I prefer not to speak oh, to you. We're, we're done. And this is now my weekend starts. Here we go. Oh, bye. <laughs>